Right, good evening and welcome to Sidebar. My name is Ken Mijungu and this is Sidebar. Once again, this Wednesday, we are putting all the conversations that are important to you into perspective. But first, we are beginning right here with Mwalimu Dida, presidential candidate. But first, before we go to that, let's take a look at the week in a wrap. Safaricom allowed this illegality to go on and did not even care to report the various illegal activities of these game kits. Some of the questions that Kenyans should ask themselves today is what happened also to their so-called backup in the clouds. Sasa squeeze babu ameanza mweshimua speaker. Akiamuka leo hataki safan mofon. Akiamuka kesho hataki chibukati. Pazi si asusie uchakuzi. Kwa nini atutishi asusie? And for us to move to be assured of free and fair elections, Mr. Speaker, it is important that we must have a level playing ground, Mr. Speaker. Otherwise, it's useless if we go back and yet the ICT system has not been corrected. Al Gurai should not print ballot papers, period. Right, sidebar, where the most important conversations happen. Good evening and welcome. And I want to take this opportunity also to welcome uh, Abduba Mohamed Diba coming to share with us your opinion of the nation. Thank you very much. All right, let's begin. But first, let's watch what he said yesterday. We saw the court verdict. The problem was IEBC and how things will help happen. And three departments in IEBC. The legal department is good. The head of the legal department has resigned. Number two is generally, Ezra was, says he, he's in charge of logistics. The head of the logistics should step aside. The head and the whole of the information technology department, the IT department, should go. Two, By the way, Raila would, would have been, A, B, in my C, government, D. Raila would have been the chairman one, one, of the one, Human Rights one. Commission. <laughs> it's very good in it's very good in you know in putting things right but i don't think he can make a good leader anyway Uru needs three months rehabilitation agent if you love him and you respect him please take him there all right very controversial remarks don't you think so uh rahim you know it depends with what you believe in um Ideally, there is what is right, and uh, realistically, our grandparents may have gone wrong, and uh, generations after generations, we saw the wrongs, and we believe that what we see is right. Okay. Uh, I think as a nation, we are out of topic. As a country, we have missed. We are beating about the bush. Our business is not determining who among big wings, tribal heads, who is stronger. Which tribe is stronger than the other? Who is stronger than the other? No. If you read history, um, before the coming of the Mzungu, we were living African, we were living communal, we had our own lifestyles. I don't know what happened, and uh, they scrambled for Africa. And somebody will just tell you, you are my slave, you cannot move, this is my land. You know, just something happened. Obviously, God has been forgotten, and that is why such a mess has been accepted by God himself. You know, you are the head of your family. You are the head of the community. You are a nation. And then somebody comes and tells you, all of you belong to me. Then this caused a lot of pain. There's, the land has gone. Land was an agenda. Freedom of a movement. You cannot move from one village to another. You must have the, the tag. You see, there was no job. You were forced to work. So many things happened. Okay. Then this led to, to the Mau Mau. You know, people will say, no, enough is enough. 
Okay. So many people died. And we thought, we thought, our success and our development, whatever development we want, is in kicking out the Mzungu. We did that. We did that. And Kenya was in, declared an independent nation, a republic. But the problem was still there. Okay. Everybody started talking low that fine, the land has been taken away, we have it, but it is not yet back. So are you blaming our history to the past? Listen, mm -hmm. why did we fight? Why did we fight? For the, the things we believe in. We wanted our land. We wanted democracy. We wanted freedom. We wanted development. We wanted to be ourselves. But when this Mzungu left, he never went with the pieces of land. But still, the problem was there. The Kenya African Union was formed. We had a Mzungu. The skeleton is African, but still the beliefs and the scrambling and the partitioning and the stealing was what we, our ancestors were fighting. Kenyatta died. Moy came in. Still there were a lot of complaints. Up to an extent, when he was handing over here at Uhuru Park, people embarrassed him. And they said, you are the problem. Go. We will now continue. Kibaki came. Zero tolerance to corruption. But 10 years went and people were crying. Uhuru came. Now, what is the problem? What is our problem? Is the problem the leaders that we have? Is the problem the citizens? Where is the problem? Do we fight and quarrel, saying that, no, it is not Uhuru. It is Raila. It's not Raila. It's Uhuru. What? And then immediately it, it's over. We are still in the same problem. We need to think. And one issue that we need actually to think about seriously is God. Okay. When God is mentioned, mm -hmm. you also become scared. This Kenya belongs to God, and the whole world belongs to God. Okay. Without God, there can be no justice, and there can be no development, and can be no, civilization is not there. Okay. I, will, I will talk about that briefly. The other thing that is very important is we have to be patriotic. Patriotism, I want Kenyans to get this right. Patriotism is not believing in a certain tribe. Patriotism is not believing in a certain head of state. Patriotism is not believing in a certain person. Patriotism is fighting for your constitution. Believing in the constitution. Believing in the and, dignity and, of this country. And, and you don't think where Kenya is currently, that is happening. No quarters will satisfy your imagination in terms of uh, fighting for the constitution? Who respects the constitution today? Who? Do, do, do you journalists respect the constitution? When the constitution says you have to be very careful in what you say and what you do, and then you write, Kibaki died. You can just write, and the, the following morning we see Kibaki playing golf. And it is you, journalists, who are doing it. Nobody respects the w constitution. What has that, that to do with the constitution? You, what the constitution says, there is freedom of worship, uh, there is freedom of expression. They, but you have to be careful. Okay. You have to be professional in what you are doing. But that does not they explain to me. They write anything. I'm not I'm saying, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. the courts analyzed the petition and they said there is a problem that there was a problem around the election a whole kenyan died msando died why did he die who mentions that who mentions that somebody has gone around transparency uh, in in the election and when they said in fact the chief justice was wise enough to hit the nail on the head and he said I don't blame the candidates, but I blame IBC and how the whole thing was handled. But that does not explain to me still why well, your remarks are very controversial. And it seems like you don't stop at nothing to explain Define yourself. controversy, number one. 
It, what, what do you mean by controversy and what is controversial? I'm going to define that. Yes. Let's just take a short break. When we come back, I'll define and I'd like to play that bite again okay. so that you put it in context. Okay. All right. So side by take a short break. I'm here with Malimu Dida. When we come back, we're still talking about his remarks. All right, welcome back to Sidebar. My name is Ken Mijungu, and we're speaking to Abduba Dida. And here, what is in context is the kind of remarks that he puts out there. He is not shy, and he stops at nothing to make his mind known. And that's where we begin. So you are asking me to define controversy. Look at the remarks you made uh, a day ago about the president, for example. Don't you think those remarks are controversial? Now, when the government and its organs will take the alcohol law, stop any vehicle and then get a whole Kenyan blow this okay go in why you cannot manage this car you have taken more than the limit why do you stop a Kenyan and test whether he's sober or not you love him and you want to take care of his life because he will risk his life and all the, the life of the passengers if you cannot trust one Kenyan with his own life and four passengers, why do you allow the president to be drunk? But Is he that, above the law? That has not been confirmed. Listen. You don't know that. Boss, because you're not a it doctor. It is an IEBC requirement that any presidential candidate must be tested okay. and must be of sound mind. That happened to you as listen, a presidential candidate. Listen. You, you know, boss... So many things happen. You, we, you, we, you, you analyze a character by what he says, by what he does, and by what others say about him. When you add up that, do you want to say the president is sober? At all he said, please calm, calm down and sober when you're talking to people. Even the deputy president said he's managing this country. He's managing this country. And he says this talking to his people in Kalenjin language. So, so what I'm saying is, okay. nobody is above the law. Yes. Nobody is above the, the law. law. Right. And it is democratic okay. for you to criticize your president. Okay. It is democratic for you to actually expect more of your president. Okay. But when you want to defend a person because he comes from your tribe, when he wants to defend a party, you, you want to punish the, the, the poor, unaenda kwa village, unamuaga pombeao. Yeah, because you see this man last night was not orderly, he could not know where he's going. If the president says, I respect the court verdicts, and then he immediately says, Maraga Taniona, Mimi Tabutrona, Nini, and the people ask, what is wrong with this? From his behavior. So what we are saying is, we can see there is something wrong with you. All right. And I say, I okay. say and I will repeat, any leader, whether a driver driving a vehicle, whether a head of a department, whether a man, whether a woman, any Kenyan is not above the law. Okay. And if you want to test me, and whether I'm sober while driving my vehicle, you must, how can, how, if you refuse to trust a person with four passengers in a car, how do you want to trust a person with managing 40, 40 million Kenyans? All right, let's speak about the respect to the rule of law and uh, the outcome of the Supreme Court. This is something that is of concern to many. They respect it, but they don't agree with it. Is there a difference in your mind between respecting and not agreeing with it? Well, uh, if you respect it, if you say, I have respected this verdict, obviously you agreed with it because you'll have rejected. But, you know, the first impact, you know, when this happens, you may think right and say, I accept with this verdict, and that is taken. Everybody was happy. Okay. When the president said that, everybody was happy. And uh, when you sit down and think, how much money did I use? And then somebody comes to you. Why did you accept it? You know, <laughs> you will have some behavior changes and disorder. All right. That is accepted. Plus one minus one is accepted. But the whole thing is, he has accepted the verdict. And he immediately went to campaign and talk to the people. He told them, you have heard what he said. As much as I don't agree with it, but yeah, I respect the I court. respect it. Oh. And if he, if he never respected it, he could have behaved otherwise. And Kenya would have today been something worse than where we are today. All right. So you 
after the election, you made a few comments after the election, after the pro pronouncement of the court. And one of the comments that caught the attention is how you look at the country in terms of uh, the political setup and the leadership. In your mind as Dida, what is the ideal scenario at this time, just briefly? What should be happening at this time when one side is pulling on the left, one side is pulling on the right? They are not qualified. Both are not qualified, according to how I see. Both you mean NASA and uh, Jubilee. Jubilee? Okay. Even if they are elected and they come to office and they rule for five years, whichever side, Kenya will just be worse than what it is today. That what, is my, my perception. What is the barometer for qualification in terms of how have you well, graded them? Number one, our main aim is prosperity. We want to develop. We want to develop. I said and I started, we fought for independence because we wanted development. Kenyatta said, I will make sure Kenya will develop and I will take on three things. Ignorance, disease, and, and poverty. poverty. He died when Kenya had more diseases. He died when we were more poor. He died when this happened. Moi came and he said he will follow the footsteps, Arambe, and we will fight poverty, we will fight poverty. There was nothing in the government coffers, and you know how he was embarrassed. Kibaki came and he says, I'm fighting corruption. This is our enemy. This is our enemy. And then he ended up saying, if my friends who I trusted are stealing, what do I do? So development and prosperity, listen carefully, development and prosperity is a product of peace. If there is no peace, Kenyans, if there is no peace, forget about development and prosperity. Forget about it. And peace is a product of trust. Today, nobody trusts the other in this country. Nobody trusts the other. <laughs> I don't think the president trusts the deputy. I don't think Kalonzo, look at this. Look, sincerely look at this. And Kenyans, think about this. Five years ago, Ruto was working with Raila. More than five. Yes. More than five. Yeah. About seven years. Yes. And then seven years ago, Kalonzo was working with Uhuru. Uhuru. You see? With today, Kibaki. Yes, Kibaki and Uhuru. Yes, yes. Kalonzo today does not trust Uhuru. But these are political realignments. There is nothing like politics. The realignment. What we want to listen, listen, listen. You mm. must have principles in life. Okay. You must have principles. I heard Mzemoy saying if you want to join a political party, you must understand why you want to join. What is the what is the objective of this political party? Sio asubuhi uko hapa, saa uko hapa, you come to me and you ask for fair. I came to the office, I voted for you, give me 500. You tell him please I don't have. Tutawe kwenda, I'm joining another party. Wachana na huyo. Lack of principle. Lack of now listen. Peace is a product of trust. And trust is a product of justice. Okay. Justice is a product of good 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 governance. And good governance is a product of good leadership. Good leadership is a product of integrity. Okay. And integrity, integrity, doing the right thing All when right. you are alone okay. is a divine token. When you serve God is when he bestows you integrity. You become a person with principles. It is God who gives. We want to abuse God. And then you want to be a good leader? No. I'd like, to talk about, I'd like to talk about the principles because when we come back, we're taking a short break. Because what, you're one of the candidates post-2013 uh, general election. You were offered a seat at uh, the CDF as the chairman of the CDF and you rejected it. I'd like to talk about that in relation to what you're talking about right now, being principled in politics. We do that shortly. First, Sidebar takes a short break. All right, welcome back to Sidebar. My name is Ken Mijungu, studio with Abduba Dida, former our presidential candidate for the Alliance for Real Change, talking to us about the conversations around the country. Before, Malimu, we talk about what's happening and the stalemate and how possibly in your mind it could be solved. Let's talk about the uh, same period almost in 2013, right after the election. You have dismissed, our last conversation is you have dismissed both uh, the NASA and Jubilee candidate as unqualified. However, in your comments yesterday, you said actually you will vote for the president and you give a condition and you said you'd give a position to Raila Odinga. So sort of they're qualified. But let's talk about uh, this period, same time, uh, 2013. You were given a position 
on what value, on what grounds did you reject that position? Well, uh, number one, it was directly from the president, and it was not constitutional. It was to come to him. Uh, the, the appointment was supposed to be made by the CS devolution, and then she takes it to parliament. The vetting is done, and uh, the final result is the president. So he did it himself, which was, which was not constitutional. And number two, it was for only eight months. And according to the constitution, it's supposed to be th uh, three years. And uh, number three, it had to do with the MPs. And, and you know, MPs are people who are referred to us, they are actually personified. They are referred to us pigs, and you know, the stories that were happening those times. Nobody is sincere. Now, I, I just wanted things to be placed right. If an MP will come with a budget for his constituency or her constituency, and they will tell me this Soviet is 15,000 each, uh, I, know, I know the price. I know the price, wholesale, retail, and all that. Then I will tell the MP this is not possible, it's not right. Maybe it was by mistake that a lot of zeros were added. You know, they will regroup and go to parliament and say this man is not doing the right thing. And remove you. And then they take it to the president and the president will not consider integrity and work. The president will consider how many votes is this MP bringing me back. So I never followed it up. By, by virtue of uh, there being some cons constitutional problems and then things not clear, I never wanted to soil myself. You see how Charity Ngilu suffered yeah, give the land, give the land, give the land initially, and then she, she was taken to court and she was told, whose signature is this? In, you will be called and you will be told, just do it. And uh, you don't want to follow the, uh, the, the, the policies and the constitution. You want to follow the person who has appointed you, you know? Okay. And then you serve her. Okay. So I never wanted, I, never, I, don't, I don't want to abuse anybody and I don't want to be abused. We are not mad, we are not sick, we know what is right and we know what is wrong. Okay. If you re mean business, mm -hmm. we know how to take this country forward. Okay. And if it is just politics, I don't play politics, and I say I'm not a politician. I'm a teacher, I'm a leader, I want to teach, I want to help myself right. and my country. Right now there's a, a lot of polit political realignments ahead of the repeat presidential election. Uh, worst case scenario, the case filed by one of the presidential candidates, Okuro, Okuro Court, which is in the High Court, uh, was referred back to the High Court. If at all it doesn't go through and only people in the ballot will be President Huru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga, which means you are left out and uh, there are a lot of political realignments ahead of the election, would you want to support any of these teams? No. No, I'll just be in the library. I have so many things to do. Why wouldn't you want to realign yourself with a but political party? You know, if I agree with any of them, I will not have gone an extra mile to register a party and to go through these problems. But because I really looked into each one of them and others, yeah? Somebody was a leader for 30 years. Somebody was a leader for 40 years. You are defeated by a constituency. And then you want to say, oh, you know, I want to change this country. What? This glass, you could not. You know, leadership is what God gives. And in leadership theories, they say 1% of leaders are born, born leaders. 1% are born followers. Even if you take them to Harvard, they will not learn anything to do with the leadership. 98% can be trained, depending on who will train, which syllabus will be used, for how long and which method will be used. So all of us understand. Those who are following Jubilee understand that there is nothing here. Those following NASA, just it, 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 is, it is not for the sake of Kenya. It is not for the sake of Anakula. It is our person that will not help. This is what a share. Kenya is a share of the land that God has given us. We will soon leave this world and meet God. We have to respect God by taking Kenya the right way. Okay. Mambo ya kusema dini fulani, a mambo ya kusema this is my religion, this is God is one, the family that started this world is one, 
if Matiangi, as the cabinet secretary of education, can give a directive, and every village, every nursery school can listen to that, do you think God is a confused character who will talk different languages to different many? No, 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 no. We need to, the world is more than six billion years old. We need to trace our originality. We need to think of where this mess has come from. We need to be sincere. Okay. We are not sincere. All right. You traced it back to our roots. Now, I'm, I'm also interested in knowing your opinion about what's happening in the country currently. Look at this helmet, the grandstanding, uh, if I may call it as such. NASA is demanding for reducible minimums, which they say if it's not fulfilled, they're not going to go for a, a re-election. They're not going to participate. And Jubilee on the other side are insisting that they have to respect the institutions and go to the election with the existing um, institutions as they are currently constituted. What's your opinion? I said, and I repeat, we don't respect the Constitution. We don't care about the dignity of this country. We don't care about the lives of, of Kenyans. And uh, the, the whole thing is, if Raila will say, and he says it right, because it is from Raila, the government will oppose. Even if it's right? But Raila is right. Currently, let me tell you, let me tell you, and I'm very sorry to be very specific. If, I, if you look closely at the Luo community, currently it is two tribes fighting. The Luo community wants stra a straight line. As much as they could be emotional, everything that they are saying, Raila is guided. The, the, the elections were cancelled. And uh, the courts pinpointed that it is IEBC and the technology. Now, I'm asking, if this is the scenario, what will have been the procedure that is supported by both NASA and Jubilee? Those who are suspected, please, I'm not saying you, you have made a mistake. You, you, there is a problem, and the problem is around your department. Step aside with half salary. With half salary. Let the director of public prosecution come in and find out. If it was the machine and not the, man, the person manning the machine, then you, you, you will be told, no, we have ascertained that it is, the problem was not you. The problem was the system itself. You can buy a mobile phone and it has a problem itself. So, so both Jubilee and NASA should help these uh, employees in IEBC to step aside. Okay. They don't want to go. Ezra Chiloba doesn't want to go because he wants to be forced out of office and procedurally, and then he's told police, he's told by the clergy and this, police, take your money and go, and then we pay him for five years. No. Probably he doesn't want to go because he doesn't see any wrong he has committed. But the, the, yeah, that is why I'm telling you we need to respect the constitution. The, 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 what, look at the piece of presentation that was done by the deputy chief justice, the lady. Yeah? It was very clear that it was logistics. If you never had electricity in a town, why couldn't you travel to the next town and then do an effort? Okay. Why could the secretariat not organize and facilitate that? Up to today, the, the Form 34A are not missing, are not, are not available. And uh, number two, uh, 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 there was tampering with the result technologically. So it is not an issue of Raila is saying okay. we should oppose. It is not that Raila is difficult. What he's saying is, please, let's sort out the problem. The courts have identified. Initially, I thought Raila himself has messed up and Uhuru has messed up. That's what I thought. But the court said it is not the both candidates. We it blame IBC. IBC. All right. Now, so IBC, Jubilee, the ruling party, and, uh, and NASA, and any Kenyan should assist IBC staff. It is professional, it's ethical. For them to step aside and they should t step aside procedurally they should have their half salary and then the investigation should be done okay and it's not that you put a person to step aside and then you forget about him or her but they step aside when the investigations are completed if they are guilty they have to be prosecuted if I they are not guilty there would be like, I'd like to take a break for the news because we are going to come up briefly during the news to talk about this to summarize but how will just briefly in about a minute how would we conduct the election on the 26th if all of them stepped aside have you thought of that 
just briefly because we have to take a break. Have you thought of that? If both, yes, if both the commission and the secretariat were to step aside, how would we conduct the election on the 26th? They affected, they affected departments, not all. Okay. The chairperson who is a national uh, returning officer is there. Okay. So where the loopholes, where the, the, the legal department, the IT department, the secretary, the logistics can go. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm told that I have to let you go at nine. So one more question before I let you go. Way forward, look at what's happening in the country currently. The uncertainty over everything that is supposed to take place. No election date. We are not even sure because of the uh, both parties are not even agreeing on the date. We have a conversation with the IBC that they're not even, they haven't begun, but we already see a problem. There's grandstanding. How would you think, if you were asked for the data prescription for this country briefly, what would you tell Kenyans to do and the leaders right now? We are here in this world representing God. It doesn't belong to us. We are managing on behalf of God. We are from God and we are returning to him. If we fail to sort out these things, God will take it back. When the arrow of God falls, things will fall apart and minds will not, no longer be at ease. God will take kiboko ya mungu ikikuja, kila mtu atatoroka, and God will bring a clean team. So okay. what I'm asking Kenyans is, yeah. please engage in a lot of prayers and ask God, the almighty creator, okay. to help us. He All has right. blessed us with a good country, with good citizen, but our problem is leadership and it will be sorted by him. All right. Prayers can help us. A good place to end. Prayers will help. Thank you very much. Not Malimu Dida, Abduba Mohamed Dida, the presidential candidate for Alliance for Real Change. Thank you for coming and sharing the conversation with us. And of course, Sidebar continues right after the news. That's at 10. And we have a fresh panel who are coming to help us discuss everything that is happening around you, including the 60 days that is remaining. Now it's less than 60. But what happens? And of course, putting everything to perspective, including Uganda, the debate on age limit, and right here in the country, what's going on at BOMAS. That coming up at 10. But first, I'd like to thank you for coming and news coming up next in a short while so stay with sidebar and stay with ntv